Welcome to another tutorial in my tutorial series CAS, Computer Algebra System for Mathematical Technical Applications in CV Engineering using MedCAD Primers application. This tutorial is part of lecture two where we will deal with functions. This lecture will start with this tutorial and here I would like to introduce the topic using a simple example. You see here the already uh, printed result in a PDF file and um, we will we have a, a yes a, a example from civil engineering yeah or you can also take it I think it's also the same in mechanical engineering it's really quite simple one we have an a plan in this plan there's a force the force is um, inclined to the X axis with the river uh, phi. And uh, this forces causes a moment uh, in the origin. And we would like to um, visualize um, the relationship between the uh, inclination angle phi to the moment. Yeah, and of course, we have some parameters. Yeah, again, if the magnitude of this force is one parameter, the lever or the distance uh, of this force to the origin is one parameter and the uh, inclination step uh, yes the inclination step uh, of uh, p so we will, we will change the the um, the angle p uh, between 0 and 180 degrees in 10 degree steps um, and um, then we have to uh, uh, determine our relationship in form of a function yeah, here it's our function we have to design you see it's a really simple one it's actually a sine function and um, then we can create the function values this i will show you how you can evaluate such a function if you have some uh, some um, function some some given uh, function parameters and how you can evaluate uh, the the function values in relation to these parameters Uh, which is not so common. Yeah, what you have, what is more interesting is actually the, the visualization of this. What you see here in form of a diagram. This I will show you how you can uh, set up a, a diagram in MathCAD to visualize the course of the function in a certain domain. Then we make some curve um, sketching. Uh, we we uh, uh, determine the uh, the first and the second derivative of the function. And then if we have them, we can uh, evaluate the uh, the zeros of the second of the first derivative yeah, to find out where's a maximum or a local maximum or local minimum. And then we can we can also use the the second derivative uh, to decide if it if it is maximum or minimum, this we do here. Here's the evaluation of the root. I show you two possibilities how you can evaluate uh, such a root of a function, and then we will Uh, yeah, we will also evaluate the other roots of the of the main function. In this step, in the fourth step, I will show you how you can transfer function values into vector values, which is also quite important, in my opinion. And the last step uh, will be that we uh, visualize all the evaluated values, the vector which we have here, yeah, and the function itself, this, the first derivative, the second derivative, The uh, um, the position of the of the local maximum, its value, and so on. How we can visualize all those things in this um, in a diagram. So this you will learn in this tutorial. If you're interested, then uh, you can stay. Of course, uh, we cannot do all of this uh, tasks in this tutorial. That's why I prepared a template, which you see here. And uh, let's scroll down. Because some of the steps which are not part of lecture two, which were already part of le of lecture one, I have already um, um, set up with the template. Yeah, so we don't do everything. So let's call down here. Here uh, we will actually start at this. Yeah. So all this part, uh, like uh, uh, entering text and formatting, this will not part of this tutorial. Inserting uh, images is also not part of this tutorial. I will not um, 
talk about units, yeah, and so on. This all of this was already uh, part of the of the first lecture. So we will start from here. Yeah, I will tell you how you can uh, calculate the output values of such a worksheet, how you can define mathematical functions, how you can work with these mathematical functions. I will show you how you can analyze functions, for, for instance, how you can do curve sketching, how you can visualize those mathematical, mathematical functions with a simple diagram in, in such a worksheet, how you can solve equations derived from these functions. Uh, I will show you some uh, um, uh, built-in functions like root and if. And uh, as I said already, uh, I will show you how you can use vectors in conjunctions with in conjunction with functions. Okay, let's get up to the beginning of this worksheet or of this template, and let's start. So the first step is a definition of uh, input parameters. I said it already. These are the input parameters. The magnitude of this force is one parameter and then the distance between the origin and the, um, the force is another par parameter, this one here. And I said it already, the, um, the step width or the increment of the ankle phi, uh, phi is also a parameter. Yeah? This, I, this we can change yeah, if you want. Now let's leave it like this. In the second step, we have to set up our moment function. And for this, we have to evaluate our moment from this force. And uh, so we have to break down the force in its components. And if we do so, as we see here in figure two, we have actually two components yeah, parallel to the C and X axis. Yeah? So the force, the component um, uh, parallel to the X axis actually uh, lays in the x axis and that's why this force no a uh, moment yeah so we can ignore this so the only uh, component of uh, f x c which forces uh, or which, which causes the moment is actually f uh, c yeah this one here the green one which is parallel to the c axis and the, this uh, component or this force has the liver lx yeah so we have to evaluate this component here is the formula for this, yeah, because it's a, a right triangle. And uh, here is the is our ankle phi. Here is uh, phi again. Here is the the right ankle. And uh, yes, and for that reason, you know, if you have a right triangle, uh, then you can evaluate this um, length with this formula. And so we have our um, basics for to uh, um, create our function. Here we are, I prepared already the text for this. So I would like to insert the function here in this text area. This is the name of the function. Now let's create the mathematical function here for the worksheet so that we can work with it. For this, I have to insert a mass region uh, into this uh, text block. So let's switch to mass. Here we are in the mass tab. Here uh, is our mass region. Um, I can load, let's give it a click. So now it's we have our mass region and now we can type in our formula or in our case, our function. So let's start with the name. A function always has to have a name. And then most in the most of the, uh, how, can, how can I say it? Um, normally a function has a parameter, at least one. When it comes to computer science, you can also create functions without a parameter. It's also possible. In MATCAD, actually, it's not a function anymore. Then it's a variable. Yeah. Uh, when it when it comes to other uh, programming languages, maybe like VBA or C++, you can also design a function without a parameter. Um, for instance, in in Excel, the uh, the constant p is actually a type of a function, yeah, without a parameter. Or you have also the uh, uh, some other functions in Excel which also have no parameter, yeah. So there's actually um, it can be some function without a parameter, but here in computer algebra system or here in MATCAD, I would say a function at least should have one parameter, yeah. So and we have one parameter, and the parameter of this function is actually phi. So let's insert the name 
for this parameter. For this, it's a, it's a quick letter. Let's, let's go to the math tab. And here we have our symbols. Here you find the lower and the uppercase quick letters. Here is phi. And if you hover over it, then you see this info box, which pops up. And uh, in there you see also in parentheses the shortcut. Yeah, you can use the, uh, the, uh, the Latin letter J and then afterwards press uh, control G and then it will be turned into a quick letter. Yeah. So from now on, I will use only the shortcut because it's quicker. So don't wonder. Um, okay, so now let's, we have to define the function. And uh, now let's start with the formula. Maybe let's start with the formula for the uh, FZ component, the component parallel to the Z-axis. Here is the formula. We take our uh, magnitude of the uh, XZ force. We uh, multiplicate this with the sine of phi, this one here. The sine is actually also a function. Yeah, a built-in function of matcat. Um, you find all the built-in functions which comes already with matcat if you go to the function tab here. And there is already some registers or some categories with some, I don't know, common used uh, built-in functions. And uh, if you pop, uh, if you click at this uh, icon here, then uh, it opens this uh, pr function browser and here you find all the functions. Yeah, And the sign function you find in the category trigonometric. Here we are. Let's, let's expand this and here is the signers. Yeah, And if you hover over it, then you see the preview. Yeah, You see this is a, it is how it's, it's uh, how the name of the function and also in parentheses how many parameter it has. And it has only one parameter. Of course, it's only a sign function. So we can Click at it. Yeah, I hope it works now. Yeah, it works. Double click, then it will it, it will insert this function into your worksheet. But you can also type the name of the function and then in parentheses the parameter. Uh, you don't have to do it uh, from here. So let's give the parameter. Let's name the parameter. Actually, it is phi. And uh, now we have our component. Uh, by the way, uh, we design our own function here, which has the name my yeah, in parentheses the parameter and this function uses an already existing built-in function yeah and then it hands over the parameter phi to this built-in function yeah the function uh, evaluates the the uh, the uh, value yeah and then we can work with this uh, value of uh, uh, um, related to phi okay now this is our component yeah and now we have to multiply to get the movement we have to multiply this with the liver, so let's use the, the the symbol for multiplication and then Lx for the liver. Make sure that all the parameter you are using here are already defined um, here. The only parameter which don't need to be defined uh, previously is the uh, uh, ankle phi. Yeah, but all the other parameters like f uh, subscript xc or Lx is defined here. Yeah, this is fxc. This is uh, the liver lx, and here the sign function is an already uh, is a it's an already existing built-in function of matcat. Yeah, make sure in your formula that if you use some other variables or function, then then they should be defined. Yeah. So only the the the, the function parameter in our case phi doesn't need to be. Uh, defined previously. So now let's come to the domain. Yeah. It is always important that you define a domain. Maybe let's let's um yeah, maybe let's, let's go to an empty worksheet to explain this. This we can turn off to explain you what I mean. Maybe let's define two functions here. Maybe some let's call it f of x is defined as x no uh, 2x and another one g of x this is defined uh, x to the power of let's say here here we are to the power of 3 maybe so these are two functions yeah and normally if you come from maybe you you know it from your mathematic uh, lectures and if you deal with 
those functions the only theoretically without any CAS, then normally you uh, you you deal with the function from uh, in the in the eternity. Yeah, you like to I'd like to know how this uh, function behaves yeah, in the in the eternity. There is actually no domain you are focusing on. But here in the computer algebra, algebra system, if you like to evaluate some values or if you like to visualize these functions, then of course you have to specify a domain, yeah, because you don't have uh, infinite space, yeah, on your monitor and and uh, and on your storage, and this this we don't have, yeah, and that's why we have to to limit our function to a domain. For instance, if I insert a, a uh, plot. Yeah, let's do this. I will explain this later in uh, in a detail. Just I do it quickly now to visualize these functions. Here is a plot, and uh, now I maybe I start with the first function I would like to see. And if I here you see that the default domain is from minus 10 to 10. Yeah, and if I enter here our x-axis, and then our function looks like this. And you see this is not from minus infinite to plus infinite because it will not work. Yeah. Despite the fact that you have a symbol for this, yeah, for instance here, here it is, yeah, but you cannot use this as a domain, yeah, that makes no sense. This is for some other purpose, yeah. You always have to specify a certain domain, yeah. If you you can change it, yeah, you, you don't have to have to um, to use the the default. You can say I would like to have it here with my minus 100 and here maybe 1000 if you want, yeah. Then it looks like this. Yeah, this is up to you. This is just the domain for the x axis, and then you can also set up the domain for the y axis. Yeah, here you have also a placeholder for the min value, let's say minus 500, and here there's the placeholder for the max value, and enter, let's say, 500. So here we are, and now we set up our codomain. Yeah, and uh, this is what I what I wanted to explain. Yeah. If you uh, deal with functions in such a software like uh, like MATLAB, but also MATLAB, it doesn't matter. You always have to define a domain because you cannot deal with such with functions here in in the uh, in the eternity. Yeah, but it is also it's, it's not just a reason uh, because of the uh, uh, computer algebra system. It is it also the the reason to uh, to define a domain comes also from the application background because we are as engineers we don't deal with um, infinite uh, objects yeah i'm a civil engineer for me uh, the building is always limited yeah the time is limited yeah and that's why if you if you uh, come from from our background from the engineer's background there's also a need to define a domain yeah which part of the function you would like to use which part of the function you are dealing with yeah that's why it's quite important yeah so let's go back now and let's define the domain the domain is actually already defined here in the uh, in the as, uh, assignment of the task yeah because it said uh, that uh, the uh, angle phi uh, should be between 0 and 180 degrees okay so let's define this here we have our phi min, which is uh, zero degrees, and we have our phi max, which is 180 degrees. And to define a domain mathematically, actually, this is the right expression. But the big but is you cannot use such a mathematical expression um, uh, to define a domain for a function. This will not work in MATCAD. Yeah, to define a domain of a function uh, in MATCAD in a MATCAD worksheet. You have to transfer this general mathematical expression into a range variable, and for this we have two possibilities. Uh, at first, we have to give it a name. As, no, at first we have to insert um, a mass region that we can enter our uh, domain variable. So let's uh, enter the mass region, and now we call this uh, domain variable in the same way like we call our a function parameter, but we don't have to, but in our case we do this, yeah. And this is phi, and uh, we define it, and now we for to we can define it like this, yeah, but it will not work, yeah, in, in, in conjunction with function, yeah, so we have to transfer this into um, a range variable, and for this we have two possibilities, let's go to mass, to operators, and here are the range variables. 
we can use this one or this one. This is actually made for vectors or matrices because the, the increment in this range uh, or the step width is always one. And the default is always one. Yeah. And here you can actually uh, uh, set up in the step range also the increment or the step width. We have in, for this in this example here, it starts with one as the first or the minimum value, and then the second value will be three, so the increment is two. Yeah, and then it will end up somewhere at the value n. So in our case, because the increment is given as delta uh, phi, so we have to use this increment here. The increment is not one in our case, it is delta phi. So let's take this one. So let's start with the minimum value. Just copy the variable name here. Then now the second value will be the increment, delta phi. I just copy and paste it here and end with the max value, this one. So takes a while. And now we have our, we have transferred uh, this general mathematical expression for our domain in a so-called range variable. And uh, now I would like to show you how this look like, how this looks like. So let's, but let, let's change the experience here of our worksheet. I would like to change it to the draft view so that we see only the content of our worksheet, not the metadata anymore. And now let's uh, evaluate this here. So I go here, maybe somewhere here and enter the name of the variable, it is phi. And then that's the equ equation symbol. And here are our, um, here, are our the, here are the values of our range variable. Uh, don't be confused. This is actually uh, the uh, ankle, but in radiant. Yeah. Uh, now uh, we actually we used here the uh, decrease. Yeah. So we have to change the unit of this um, range of these values into uh, decrease. So let's go to the math tab. Here are the units for the ankle. Here's actually radiant. If there's nothing, yeah, then it's automatic automatically radiant with the default unit for an ankle. If we want to have decrease, then take this one. And now it looks like we actually expected. Yeah. And here we can expand this here with my left uh, button on my mouse. I can make this bigger. So, and here we are. Let's move this a little bit up to use the space uh, a little bit better. And here are our, uh, our values of our range variable. Yeah, and you see it starts with zero, then we have 10, then we have 20, and here's our range variable. Yeah, phi min, zero, delta phi, 10, which is defined here. Yeah, and then it will continue in 10 degree steps, 20, 30, until 180 degrees. Okay, this is the range variable. And uh, if we have a range variable, yeah, then we can evaluate the values connecting to this range variable. If we use this range variable as parameter uh, in our, in our uh, function. Yeah? For instance, if I would like to evaluate the function here uh, before the range, variable is um, defined, let's do it here. Let's call it m subscript y of x, uh, not x, of phi. And let's evaluate this. Oh, ah, yeah, okay, the variable is here's the variable, um, was my mistake. Uh, actually, I wanted to show you uh, something else. Let's zoom a little bit out. Yeah, here's our range variable, and if I like to use, if if I like to evaluate the function, yeah, before I do this, yeah, so then you get the error message, yeah, because now the the range variable or this variable is not defined. Yeah, if you click here, let's zoom in, then you should get this error message. Yeah, this variable is undefined. Yeah, and they mean uh, with this with this error message they mean phi. Yeah, so. Let's cut it out, this expression from our worksheet. Now I have some additional space here. And here, now we define our uh, variable and now we can use it here. And now it looks like this. Let's change the unit to Newton times centimeter. And here we are. So we can expand this as well. 
so that we see all the values. And now we see all the values. Um, this here looks a little bit strange. Actually, it should be zero. But you know, pi is actually a, a infinite number, yeah, and that's why it will not uh, end with zero, yeah, in our numerical evaluation. So it will look like this. It is more or less zero, yeah. But if you don't like this expression, you can change the format of this um, output. So let's go to the mass formatting uh, tab, and here you can change it from this um, general format to the decimal. Uh, format and now it looks like this might be better yeah so here we are so let's but uh, if you um, evaluate a function like this yeah then it's actually not so easy to understand uh, how the function behaves yeah the course of the function you cannot read uh, from those values in my opinion yeah the best way to evaluate a function or to analyze a function is to visualize the function. Yeah, and uh, that's why I, I would recommend as soon as possible you should visualize the function. So this we do now. This is actually, I just sh uh, have shown this to you that you can actually evaluate a function. Yeah, you, you don't need a, for evaluation. You don't need actually a range variable. Yeah, you can uh, with the range variable you can evaluate uh, several value at once. Yeah, if you only have one, if you would like to evaluate only one value, you can also make something like this yeah you can say my and now I'll show you you can also use pi for instance instead of 180 degrees yeah here is pi until constants and then let's evaluate this you can also do yeah this is actually this one here yeah this where you see this is actually more uh, I think it was minus 15 yeah and now we have minus 17 yeah let's have a look calculating mass formatting Let's go back. Yes, yeah, so minus 15. You see, if you use pi, then it's actually a little bit more accurate, but it's also not, 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 uh, not uh, zero. Be uh, the reason is that also pi, yeah, it's a, it's an infinite constant, and I don't know how. I think it, it has around 17. I think pi, this constant pi, pi is uh, has only around uh, 17 numbers, yeah, more or less, yeah. So that's why this is also not uh, accurate, yeah, because our space uh, or our storage is limited. So okay, let's delete this because we don't need this. Slow. Let's let's go back to this uh, visualization part in this worksheet. And uh, okay, how you can visualize the functions? You have actually two possibilities in MATCAD. One, the first one is to go to plots. Yeah, this is in my opinion this is the oldest possibility, and I would call it it is quick and easy. Uh, not to say quick and dirty, I think it's quick and easy. But I, I'm not sure, but I think since one or two releases, you have also a second possibility here in the mass tab, and this is called chart component. Here you have more access uh, uh, to the appearance. Yeah, this is similar if you come from MATLAB or from Excel, then this is quite similar to MATLAB or to Excel, where you can really adjust a lot of the appearance of the uh, um, of the, the diagram, yeah, here in the plot tab, there are not so many possibilities uh, if you like to adjust the position for the legend, for instance, and so on, yeah. But for our uh, introduction, this should be enough, yeah, we don't have so many time, so this I will show you in another tutorial. Let's go back to this one, to the quick and easy uh, variant to insert a, a diagram here in the plot register card, if you go to, at first you have to click with the cursor in your worksheet where you yeah, where you would like to have your diagram. And then here you have four possibilities and two dimensional or XY plot, uh, a, 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 a Cartesian, yeah. You can also have a polar plot, yeah, with polar coordinates. Then you have a con you can have a contour plot and here uh, a treaty plot, yeah, for three dimensional uh, uh, um, visualizations. Let's take this one here in our case because we're on a plan and we are in Cartesian uh, system. So lose this one. And now uh, we have our plot inside the, uh, the worksheet. And here we have to set up the y axis. And afterwards, here's the placeholder for the x axis. So let's start with we have we have to enter the name for our function. It is actually m subscript y of phi. Here we are. And then the unit 
you have a placeholder for the unit, this should be Newton times centimeter. So if you click outside, then it, this is get turning red, yeah, because we have to define also the y-axis. And uh, yes, and here we can use actually um, our phi, we have defined here, yeah, our range variable, if we call it phi, but we can also call it alpha, for instance. Yeah, this is also possible. Let's try this one first to show you what happens. Yeah, and then um, it looks like this. Yeah, you have some default, um, because it's a sinus function, a default domain. Yeah, and maybe we ch let's change it to decrease. Let's go to uh, alpha is red, uh, it's green. Maybe it's not a good idea to use alpha. Let's call it X, maybe. Look like, yeah, X is better because uh, alpha appeared green, so alpha can, could be um, already already reserved for something. Yeah, actually, I don't know for what, but you see, uh, alpha appear, appeared green, yeah, and this shows you ah, uh, it could be ready for a unit or whatever for a constant, and. Um, and x, this is, this is, it's black, yeah, and this means uh, x is actually free, yeah, you can use it, yeah. If you, and you see, this is our default domain again, yeah, like we have it here, yeah, it's always, uh, as we had here from the beginning, was always between minus 10 and plus 10, and then we could actually also adjust here the domain, yeah. But in our case, the best way is to use our domain we have to find here, yeah, and if we call the x variable in the same way, like we have to find our domain, our range variable, then we can use it in the diag oh, in the diagram. Let's do this. So here we are. So we have only uh, from zero to pi. Yeah. Or if you want to have it in decrease, we can go into the placeholder for the unit and use decrease. So here we are. Now we can set up our functions a little bit yeah if you click at the function and you go back to the plots the function is selected yeah and then on oh the plot the plot is selected and then i click to uh, to the plot tab then i can still uh, change it a little bit i said it already you cannot change as much as you can change here in a short component but in our case what you what we can change it's actually enough we like to have a little bit bigger the line here you can change if you want the color in my case it's okay blue yeah, you can also change the background. I would like to have it transparent. And yeah, and if it's 3D chart, then you can also uh, change the perspective or if you have this color plot and so on or the surface, this you can also, but now it's, it's grayed out. So there's no need to change this. Okay. And also you can change some other parts, the scaling and the formatting and so on. And these are the, all the things you can do. Some of the things uh, we will need, I'll show you later in this tutorial. Okay, let's click out and here we are. And maybe if you have recognized that here our uh, our function actually or our curve has some uh, some uh, stair effect, I would call it stair effect, that yeah? is HS. And this comes because our delta um, phi is 10 degrees. Yeah, and this is a quite huge step. Yeah, and that's why uh, maybe if you change it here this the style to oh no, if, if you show the symbol yeah and then you see every evaluated value and this is just connected with a line yeah if you change the step width yeah here from 10 to let's say one yeah and then it looks like this yeah then it's smoother and then you see you have lots of evaluated um points now which are connect connected yeah, and that's why if you like to have nice curves and so on, then you have to use a small step width, but take in consideration, in our case, there's no difference actually. Uh, uh, our worksheet is still quite quick, yeah, but our function is quite, it's very simple, yeah. If you have more sophisticated functions, yeah, and, and you use a really small step width, and maybe I don't know which how big your domain is and how, how big your step with if maybe you have one million dots to evaluate yeah then it could it did cost you maybe performance of your worksheet which means that your worksheet or your evaluation can become time consuming yeah then you have to have to wait yeah you, uh, 
And uh, because the setup for our calculation is auto calculation, yeah, that means if you change something, then everything will recal uh, re recalculate it. Yeah? And if you have a really small step width or you have a lot of dots to evaluate, then it will cost you a lot of time. This could be really annoying. That's why I recommend if you are in such a, situa in such a situation, then maybe uh, during the design time of your worksheet, use a big step width with just few points to evaluate. Yeah. So that you have an, uh, that you can, then you have an, an idea of the, of the function. Yeah. But it might, might not look so nice like here. And maybe if everything is fine, everything is designed, then at the end you can change, uh, the, 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 the step width to, uh, some smaller size. Yeah. Which looks better. In our case, 10 was and it's enough. And let's change this back and let's turn off those dots here we don't want them because it's a function let's where is it here let's go back to plot and here let's turn off the symbols to none okay so far about this now uh, i told you uh, let's do some curve sketching i know actually uh, when we use such software like computer algebra system oh that is wrong here let's undo this i did something so okay Okay, uh, if you use a computer algebra system, you might think, for what do I need a curve sketching? Yeah, because curve sketching comes actually from a time where the people had no uh, graphical calculator or no computer algebra system, where the people had to draw such functions by hand, uh, and that's why they had they they had to uh, to find out where are the zeros, where are the uh, local minimum and maximum, and where and how the function will behave in the eternity if is there a, a limit uh, or not. Yeah, and uh, now actually we see this function, so there is no need for. But you will see in some uh, coming up uh, tutorials of this lecture that there is still a use also for some kind of curve sketching and uh, besides i also like to show you uh, what you what you can do with functions and that's why we will make a little curve sketching here uh, despite the fact that in this uh, uh, in this um, example this for for practical reason this this makes actually no sense yeah but i would like to show you also some functionalities here in, Mad in madcat and uh, and we need this uh, for the other examples which will come later in this lecture. So, okay, let's do a derivative. Yeah, the first and the second one of this function. How you can do this at first, it is also a, a function. Yeah, that's why we have to name it. Let's start with the name. This is my.1 for the first derivative in parentheses. We type the name of the parameter. It's still phi, phi. Let's define it. And here, when we go to the math tab, here are the uh, the derivative, yeah, and here, by the way, is the integral. If you need this, in this in the example, we don't need this, you only need the derivative, yeah. Just give it a click. And here we have the symbol for the derivative. You have to have some placeholders. This is for the function parameter. This is not, no, sorry, not x, this is uh, phi. Yeah, here you can insert the, the power of the derivative or the order. I don't know how you call this in English. Yeah, actually, we have, we make the first one. So uh, if you don't enter anything, yeah, then it's automatically the first one. If you can do this, yeah, but actually in, in my country, we don't write this, so I keep it empty. So there's no need to fill this up. But here you have to, to name the function you like to derive. Uh, so let's type the name. This is actually my of phi. And here we are. This is all. Yeah. So let's copy this. So, and make the second one. I want to save some time. That's why I just copy it. I rename it from one to two. And here I need the second one. Now I have to enter this parameter. And here we are. So let's visualize this. For this, I just copy this, this plot. Yeah. And insert it here again. And uh, now let's add, let's zoom a little bit out. Uh, now let's add the, uh, those two functions to this plot. To do so, there are two possibilities. You, the, the other traces, if you go to plot, it's called actually traces here. It can be um, before or after this, this function. Yeah, let's do it after. So let's click behind. 
and then add the trace. And now we get a new placeholder. This is our the first derivative. It was called m subscript y dot one. And in parentheses, the function parameter is phi. And the unit is again Newton times centimeter. Now let's copy this and add a second one. No, a third one. And this we shall call m2. And the unit is again Newton times centimeter so if we want we can also change the colors yeah maybe let's color this uh, also a little bit blue maybe like this this is thinner okay makes sense and this is also some kind of blue i don't know maybe this one here and here we are so and now we uh, visualize also the course of our two derivatives in the diagram and um, and if you look at this um, and this, uh, the course of, the, of those functions, you see that uh, the maximum of our main function here, the, the bolded blue one, has its maximum when the, the first derivative has a zero. Yeah. So to find out where the maximum is, we, we only have to do, have to find the zero of this of the first derivative in the domain. Yeah. I know. The, actually, we know the zero, yeah, because we have a really sim a simple example. Uh, this is I did I do this on purpose, yeah. If I start with to explain something in MadCat, I try to use examples which are so simple that you can also calculate it without MadCat actually. So I hope that makes it easier for you to follow all the steps MadCat does here. But the workflow which I introduce, yeah, when I design this worksheet, you can also use for more sophisticated examples. Uh, where it's not so easy to uh, to find uh, such a zero, and um, yeah, so let's let, let uh, let's pretend that we don't know the zero exactly, and we have to evaluate this. So let's do it. Uh, we have two possibilities. Actually, we have three of them, but we only do two of them. Uh, the first one is to make it uh, iteratively, yeah, uh, using. Um, numeric method yeah or an approximate method uh, there are actually two of possibilities for this if you go to mass tab you have this solving block yeah this is also some method uh, where you can solve some mathematical equations like finding roots or optimizations things and so on yeah this is like the shard component it is quite sophisticated i don't have time for this and i don't like to show this in this introduction video or tutorial i prefer a easier method and that's why i like to introduce the root function with the root function you can also find zeros and uh, but you don't have so many possibilities to set it to set this up but in our case this will work so let's go to functions here we are let's go let's, uh, let's uh, show the function um, browser and let's look for the root functions the root function is in the solving uh, here in the solving category and here is our root function here we are you see there are some other ones yeah let's take this one here the root and if you hover over it you see that the root function has actually four parameters yeah and uh, this you always have to take in consideration if you work with such built-in functions yeah take care of the parameters yeah? you have to set them up wisely give it double click and now here are the four parameters and um, yeah the first parameter is the name of the function the whole name uh, including the parameter so the function we like to root for is called m subscript oh sorry this was a shortcut i actually didn't want it to use m subscript y dot one for the first derivative then in parentheses the function parameter this is phi now we have to enter the parameter again you will you may wonder why i do to have to do to do this twice because here's the parameter and here again the reason is that you can also use the root function for a function with more than just one parameter yeah i told you already yeah the function cannot can have more than on just parameter yeah but you can only find the root for one parameter yeah and that's why you have to specify it in our certain case of course it makes no sense but the function uh, is generally made also for other um, the built-in function root is generally made also for some other 
uh, cases where you find, would like to root for a function which actually has not just one parameter. Yeah? And for that reason, there is the placeholder to define the parameter. So we did it again. And now we have to define the domain or the range in which we like to find the root. You can imagine, this is actually a sign function. Now we are only focusing um, on, on this domain from null to 180 degrees. But, um, but if you take this function uh, generally, yeah, then it actually has, uh, when, then, it, then it starts from minus infinite to plus, plus infinite, and it also, and it has, of course, infinite zeros, yeah, and, uh, and of course, you cannot, you cannot evaluate them, yeah, all of them, yeah, and that's why you have to, again, you have to focus at an range, and you have to take care that you define the range in a way that there will, that the function has a uh, a zero. Yeah, I, I can show you what happens if I don't do this wisely. Yeah, maybe I I define the domain here from 20 to 80. Yeah, there is actually no zero. Yeah, let's do this. Let's say 20 degrees. And uh, did it here. Yeah, and let's copy this, including the unit. To I said 80. Yeah. Now this range has actually no zero, and you will see if I evaluate this, then I get an error message. Yeah, it tells me the function value. Uh, there is no opposite sign. Yeah, because it it looks here, and there is no uh, change in the um, in the value. Yeah, it, there's, uh, you have to find a domain. Yeah, there's at least one zero. There could be also more zeros. Yeah, but then the the the, the root function uh, only finds one zero. Yeah, so the It will find the first zero which comes along. I think this one starting from the origin, I, I assume. Yeah. So, okay, let's set it up wisely. Let's say we like to find uh, the in our domain, and the domain has a min value and a max value. Let's use them here. Just copy and paste. And here, let's rename this to max. And here we are. So, this is our. Uh, root, yeah, evaluated um, iteratively or numerically, yeah, and now it let's change unit to 90 degrees. So this is actually not an accurate solution. It looks like an accurate solution, but actually it is not. Yeah, uh, if you like to have, you, there's also another method. Uh, this might be more interesting to for mathematicians. Yeah, they maybe they prefer an accurate solution, and this I can also show you. Uh, this time I would like to name, or, or, or I, I would like to uh, to uh, store this uh, the value in a variable. So let's give it a name. I have to look at my um, solution. How do I call it? Uh, I call it yeah, phi extreme. Uh, so j subscript ext for extreme and uh, define it and uh, for this I have to uh, uh, make an equation yeah the name is it's the one side is my dot one for the first derivative of Phi yeah equals zero uh, sorry the equal symbol you have to use from here from the operators and it's this one don't mix this up with this one here actually this is an equation this means the right side is equal to the left side. For this, I have, we have to use this bolded equal sign. And uh, yes, zero. Be careful. Actually, you will see if I like to solve this, then I get an error message. Uh, you will see, or, or I will explain later why. Let's solve this. Let's start with solving this. And uh, we can solve this symbolically, which might be in most of the cases the accurate solution. So here is the solve. You have to tell for what parameter you like to solve it or for what uh, this is actually phi. And now I get an error. Yeah, takes a while and it should give me an error message. Yeah, now I get my error message. Yeah, and it tells me that uh, that solve variable, it, 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 it cannot solve it. Uh, why I can why they cannot solve it? The reason is that we actually defined phi already here as a range variable. Yeah, here is phi defined, yeah, and of course this is 
uh, defined. Um, let's say this is already uh, uh, defined uh, before uh, we use this equation, and that's why this is taken in consideration. Yeah, and um, so how we can solve this? Yeah, of course we can uh, enable or disable this evaluation. Yeah, let's do this. I can also show you this way. It's not nice, but let's do this. Uh, we can click at this region and then go to calculation, and here we can disable this region. Yeah, but, but now we cannot use this in our uh, in our di uh, diagrams anymore. But we get a solution here. Yeah, that's but uh, that's but this is not, not not a nice workflow. Yeah, because we need our range variable. The better way is. Let's enable this again. Click here, go to and here, calculate. So, no, no, disable. Turn this off now. Here, uh, we just have to rename it. Give it another name. Let's call it X or Alpha. Let's call it Alpha. Uh, in this case, it's not turning green. Yeah, so it's okay. And here, Alpha as well, and now we also get it's also um, evaluated, and we don't need, we don't have to uh, disable our range variable, yeah, which we using we are we are using in this diagrams. So this is the accurate solution, and we can also numerically evaluate this if we want to. Yeah, we can click behind this and then use the numerical evaluation, and here this is the. Uh, the numerical uh, value of this expression, of course, it's in radiant. So let's change it to degrees. And here we have 90 degrees as, as well. Yeah, those are the two possibilities. Yeah, you can also use this one if you want, but in our case, uh, because of the equation is so simple and or the, the function days are enough. And now we know where is our uh, the location of our maximum, and if we know it's a location, then we can also uh, evaluate the value of the maximum. We just uh, put the, let's give it a name. The name is m, sorry, m subscript y dot max. And let's uh, evaluate this or define it. Uh, we have to call our function uh, and enter the location of our maximum into the function as parameter. And now let's evaluate this. And here is our maximum value. Let's check this up. Yeah, now Newton times centimeter. I don't, and here 48, this is, must be more or less OK. So what we can also do here is that we can find out, I just wanted to show this to you. Actually, this is really not necessary. Uh, but if you want, you can also do this with MadCat. We can find out uh, if it's a local maximum or minimum. Yeah, if you don't see the the course of the function, yeah, then there is a method how you can find out if it's a, uh, if it's a maximum or minimum. And for this, we can use use the second derivative. Yeah, this one here. Yeah, how we can do so? We just have to put those location uh, in the second derivative, and then we have to find out if the sec if this is below or upper zero, yeah? So let's do this. For this, we can use uh, another built-in function to make this decision. And this is called, oh, I always have to look for this, uh, the category, yes, piecewise continuous. Uh, and here is the if function, yeah? You see, if you use the if function, or the, uh, then this is also, you know, when you come from Excel, then I think you also have this function there. Yeah, it works in the same way here. So you have in parentheses, they have, it, it, it has two par, three parameters. Yeah, the first one is the condition. Yeah, it should be a Boolean expression, which is can only be true or false. And then the second parameter, you have to enter what should happen if it's true. And this last parameter, the Y parameter, uh, you have to enter what should happen if it's false. Yeah, so double click. And OK, we uh, call our second derivative my.2 uh, we insert our position or location of the of the local maximum or minimum and then we 
uh, decide if it's uh, lower than uh, than uh, zero. Here, this is the sign. So if it's lower zero, then it is um, a maximum. Yeah, and um, otherwise it's a minimum. Why I do why I do use uh, quotation marks minimum? This is because um, if I do if I wouldn't use quotation marks here, let's try this without. Yeah, then I get an error message uh, because a mad cat thinks that this is a name of a variable. Yeah, and then it uh, asks why why is this variable not defined? Yeah, and here if I click here, say this variable is undefined. Yeah, uh, because normally uh, Variables are have a name, yeah. And uh, but if it's just an expression, yeah, a text expression, then you have to set this up in a quotation mark. So like this, and then you get no error message, yeah, because it's not a variable name. This is actually only a text. Yeah. So this was just for fun. I wanted to show you. You can also do something like this in in a Madcat. And now, if we know that it's uh, then it's a maximum. Yeah, then we can. Yes, I don't know. Actually, we see this already here in in this in this chart. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. Um, if you want, you can also do this something like this with Madcat. And uh, yeah, the next step will be to find out the uh, m actually the minimum. But we we don't have a local minimum. What we have here is some kind of minimum, but it's actually a zero as well. Yeah. At the beginning of our domain and at the end, exactly at our at the end of our domain. We have the 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 zeros, and um, which is a little bit tricky because actually we we know exactly what the zeros are, yeah. But again, let's pretend we don't know exactly, and we would, and, and we would like to evaluate this. And uh, for this, I show you also a, a possibility. We can use the same way uh, like we have done this here. But the big but is here we had only one zero. Yeah, and here we have actually two of them. And how can we find out the two zeros? Yeah, and this I would like to show. And um, yeah, let's start. Let's give it a name. Yeah, uh, I call those locations also phi. Subscript. They are also extreme. Let's 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 pretend they are they are minimums. Yeah, min. And uh, but we have not only one, we have two of them. And uh, but I would like to use only one variable, not to, I don't want to have two variables here yeah, for the zeros. And if I have uh, more than one value uh, in connected to one variable, then we have to use a vector. Yeah, so to find the vector, um, we just uh, we can uh, we have to uh, set up the index yeah and the first value of this vector we would like to evaluate so let's set up the index here are the index so and we start with one by the way if you don't use this template yeah if you use a default template of madcat then you don't you, you must be careful yeah because in my calculation settings i use always the origin uh, with one, yeah. But you can also use it with zero, yeah. Origin means means which is the start index of your vector or matrix, yeah. And uh, the start index, what I would like to use because I also teach Excel, and in Excel it is one, and I would use, I would like to use the same way in Madcat, and that's why I prefer one, yeah. But the default is actually zero, yeah. Here's a default a blanket uh, a template of Madcat, yeah. And if I you click here, then you see the default is zero. Yeah, if you want, you can set change this to one. Yeah, if you if you also prefer to start always with one. Yeah, to index your vectors or matrices, but you can also leave it with, uh, with zero. But then you have to use zero instead of one. Yeah, so let's go back to our template. So that's why my first value of my vector for my uh, minimal uh, locations uh, should be one. Yeah, so, and now let's define this. And uh, yes, let's start maybe with the root function. Yeah, 
This time I just type it. You don't have to start from the from the function browser. You can also type it if you are familiar with those functions. There's no need to to uh, to look for them with the, in the function browser. So then maybe let's turn this off. And uh, the name of the function is actually my of phi. The parameter is phi. And um, yeah. Ah, yeah, okay. Um, we cannot use actually the root function because the root function. Ah, yeah, okay, we can also use the root function. But now we have to set up a range where, where in which our um, root is. Yeah, maybe let's use the range minus pi divided by two and plus pi divided by two. Yeah, this we can do. Yeah, so here's our range mat. You go to constants. Here's pi minus divided. By two and the second range is plus pi. Yeah, plus and evaluate this. And here's actually zero. Yeah, you can also do it in a other way. Let's copy this one here. And um, it's also possible. Um, Yeah, uh, you can say my of alpha equals zero, solve alpha, and you get zero. Yeah, in our case, it's quicker. Yeah, if you use this uh, here, you cannot actually easy, so easily set up which uh, zero you like to you like to evaluate. Yeah, in our case, it is the first one. Yeah, so uh, this one here. So we can use the symbolic evaluation. Yeah, or the the um, uh, uh, numerical one, yeah, this one here. Yeah, but here we can set up actually uh, also where we, which which uh, which zero we like to evaluate. Yeah, here you cannot. Yeah, you get also maybe I'm not so good in this symbolic evaluations here. Maybe there's also some uh, some keyword with what you can maybe also uh, set this up. By the way. Uh, here in the solving block, you can. It is similar to this one. Yeah, here you can also uh, set up the uh, the range in which you are looking for the zero. Yeah. So okay, but in here when 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 we are looking for the first one, yeah, in this coordinate system, yeah, then this the uh, the symbolic evaluation is okay. Yeah. So let's go to the second one. Here. So and that's but this time it's it's. The second value, yeah, so change this index to two, and uh, we have to use the root one. And now let's have a look. Uh, actually, we look here. Let's say plus pi, and here maybe like this. No, this is um, yeah. Then let's say two pi. And this we don't need. So, and here we are. Yeah. So we get this zero. Yeah. Okay. Now we evaluated the two zeros of our function. And if we have the zeros, then we can also evaluate the, uh, the values. Yeah. But it's zero. I know, but maybe let's also evaluate them so we can. Prove that it's really zero. There's no mistake. Yeah, you can prove this visually, of course, in your if you have a diagram. That's why I always recommend use a diagram as soon as possible. Yeah, if you have a diagram that some of the steps are which are which I'm showing here are actually not necessary. Yeah, but okay, let's prove it that it's really zero. At first, like we like to show our results. Yeah, our vector. So let's call the variable again and let's evaluate this. How it looks like this, yeah. These are the um, two zeros. No, there is a mistake. It shouldn't be zero. It should be. Uh, what is wrong here? Ah, yeah. I see. I, I changed the the wrong um, the wrong uh, um, 
a root function. This should be actually here and this should appear. So let's copy this. Uh, maybe let's do it like this. Copy this and then this should be up here. And this, oh shit, this was not a good idea. This should be here. And this should be here. And this we can delete now. So now it's better. Okay, zero and pi, actually, or 180 degrees. Now let's evaluate the values and let's call them m, the variable for this, my dot uh, min. And um, uh, uh, def the definition symbol, and we have to use our function my and parentheses insert the location here as parameter and evaluate this and it's zero, of course. Yeah, it's, it's again this such a, a approximate solution, but we can change at first. Let's change the unit and then let's change the format of our result here. Let's go to mass formatting and here to decimal and then we have zero. Okay. So before we, we, we visualize all those evaluated values, I told you already at the beginning of this tutorial, I want to show you as well how you can uh, convert function values into vector values. Um, speaking honestly, when I was, as I was starting with MadCat, now it's already uh, more than 20 years ago, I was always confused when I, when I deal with function values because they look more or less like vector values. Yeah, let's go back here. You see the range variable. Yeah, and then the connected function values. And this looked actually like a vector. Yeah, but you cannot handle this like a vector. And uh, this could be like, confusing. Yeah, what do I mean with handling? Yeah, uh, let's show it here in this chapter. And uh, let's uh, uh, turn this into vector values, and then I can show you the difference. And uh, for this, um, for the vector values, we need an, an index, yeah, because the vector will be created dynamically, and that's why we have to create an index. Uh, actually, we will talk about vectors in the third um, lecture. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I will, um, when, when, when we are, now we are actually dealing with functions, but we also, I want to show you also uh, how you can turn this uh, into vector values. Uh, just so far, yeah, concerning vectors, if you go to matrices and tables, uh, if you'd like to insert some static vectors, this you can do from here. Yeah, but I will go into detail in the third lecture. Here we will we will create a dynamic vector. Yeah, uh, dynamic uh, because it is. Um, depending on the step width and the range area, the step width of our function, yeah? This is our range area, this one, and the step width is defined here. And if I change the step width, uh, then also our vector should change, yeah? And that's why we make a dynamic vector. So let's go to the first step. And for this, we need an, at first we need a mass region, and this mass region, we uh, design uh, or we create um, a variable, we call it i for the index of our vector. And this uh, is also an, a step range, yeah, but in our case it's just a normal range, yeah, because the increment of a vector is normally always one, yeah, and that's why we use this range here. But we have to uh, calculate it, we start at zero, I will explain you later why. And then we take our max uh, range, this one here, and here we are, and divide it by the increment of our ankle phi or by the step width, it is called delta phi. Oh, a small letter. So. This is actually our index for the vector. Let's uh, evaluate this to show you how it looks like. 
here we are. It starts with zero, as you see here, and the and then we have um, for each value of this vector we have an index. Yeah. So so far about this. Yeah. And this is dynamically. Yeah. Dynamically means if I change my uh, range, yeah, the max value of my range, then it then it is uh, this. Uh, the, then I will have more values, yeah. Or also, when if I change the the um, the uh, this the step width of my range, yeah. So this is also this is linked to my uh, to my function domain, yeah. So the, I, I can still change this, and also my vector will change its size yeah, if I change those parameters, or if I change the domain of my function and the step width of my of my ankle phi. So okay, now we have let's evaluate the. Uh, the uh, ankle, yeah, uh, as a vector, yeah. Let's do this. I will call this uppercase phi. Let's go to the normally I used to call vectors or matrices with uh, uppercase letters, yeah, and normal uh, scalar variables with lowercase letters, yeah, as um, if I can, yeah, I do so. So in our case, let's use the uppercase. Quick letter for phi, this one here. And now define the index. By the way, don't mix an index for a vector or matrix here, this one, not with this one. This is actually a subscript, yeah, which we have used for our uh, MY. Yeah, this is only a name. This has no mathematical meaning. Yeah, this has actually a physical meaning, but which does not matter in this worksheet. Yeah, uh, we need it. Yeah, if we read it and we understand what this means with this, but this has no mathematical meaning. But an index, yeah, this has a mathematical meaning because it's the uh, the index or of an of a vector, for instance. Yeah, or the the row or column index for a matrix. Yeah, so please don't mix this up with this one. Yeah, so let's use index. Now it's an index, and this is i. Yeah, but we have to uh, at one, yeah, because we start with the origin at one, yeah, zero will not work, yeah, because our uh, setup is that we start with one, that's why zero and one is one again, yeah. So let's define it, and here let's take our i and multiply this with delta uh, phi. So uppercase d and lowercase j. And here we are. Let's evaluate this. And here we have our um, our ankle yeah, in a vector. Let's change it to decrease. Here we are and make it bigger. So actually, it looks more or less the same. Yeah, if I use my range variable, which we defined already in our worksheet here. And if I change the unit to also to decrease, and if I expand here this area it is okay the unit is not decreased now here decrease it is uh, i think uh, it looks the same yeah but it isn't this is a vector this is a range variable a vector it is created dynamically but if it's already created you have access to the values yeah you can take this vector it's it is some kind of static then afterwards yeah if it's created it is static and you can for instance, you can have access to this third value. Just take the variable of this vector, the variable name. It was, I think it was this one here, the uppercase, this one, and uh, the index. Let's go to index here, where it is. And now this, I would like to have this, this third value. And here we, oh, this, okay. Why it's not, why I cannot use it? Because it's here. Yeah, it's not defined. I have, to, here it is defined, so I have to go at the same uh, line yeah, or below. So, and here's our value. We can change the unit. And here you have this 20 decrease. Yeah. This you cannot do with this range variable. Yeah, you have actually no individual access to the values. Yeah, you can uh, dynamically evaluate or create these values, but you have no access to them. You cannot touch them yeah, and work with them. Yeah, only uh, like we have the, uh, uh, only uh, with all with, with all those values at once, yeah. As for instance, if you use those values uh, 
for a function or uh, yeah but the values uh, individually you cannot easily access them uh, to compare with a vector yeah that will not work yeah maybe if you try yeah if you here's our range variable and because it's not a vector yeah uh, despite the fact that it looks like this yeah uh, let's say three you get an error message here it tells you the value must be a vector yeah that's why I mentioned this, yeah, because I, when I was a beginner in MadCat, I was uh, really confused, yeah, and it take me a while to uh, find it out, yeah, that you, that those, uh, look, they look the same, yeah, but these are done, done different uh, types of data, yeah, this is a vector, this is a range variable. So, okay, we can do the same with our, let's move this a little bit to another, here outside, let's leave it here, maybe we need this for some, Further explanations. We can do the same with our uh, function values. We can also turn them into a vector. Let's give. We would like to store them in a in a variable. Let's call this variable vm yeah, for vector. And then let's define this. We need our function. Yeah. And now we have to to put uh, as function parameter our vector here. So we take this vector and put it into this function as a parameter. And now, now this function will evaluate each value for the, of this vector individually and creates a new vector. If the, uh, in this vector are the function values. So let's look like this. Yeah, let's change the unit to Newton times centimeter. Here we are. Let's expand this so that we see all the values. We can change, if you want, the mass formatting, the so and uh, and again yeah if we take our function values uh, which uh, insert phi yeah this again looks more or less the same yeah we have the same problem here and here change it to newton times centimeters so let's move this to the side and uh, it looks the same yeah but this is a vector this is a uh, this is uh, these are the function values, yeah, evaluated from this range variable. Yeah, you have no easy access to them. But in this case, uh, you have access to them. Yeah, if you maybe if you like to have this value here, yeah, then you can you have to uh, have to call your function. Yeah, and you have to insert not an index. Yeah, like in the vector, yeah, you have to insert the location. And this was I think it was pi. Uh, the half of pi, yeah. So go to mass. Here is our pi, and divide it with two. Evaluate this, and Newton times centimeter. Yeah. To have access to this value, you have to. You must know this. Uh, its location. Yeah. Uh, in our case, it's pi. The uh, pi divided with two. Yeah. To get to have access to this value. Yeah. We have to call here our vector, and so sorry. We need the, the index. Yeah, this is this one here, and oh, this is 18 values, so it should be this the nine, the ninth value, and here we are, Newton times centimeter. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. Okay, it might be more or less 48. Uh, if we change this, then it's 48. Yeah, you see, yeah, there's a, you have to deal with those uh, type of data in a different way, uh, despite the fact that they look more or less the same. Yeah, and sometimes uh, vector values are easier, or vectors are easier to deal with, mainly then when you interact, for instance, with MATCAT, uh, not with MATCAT, with MATCAT, with Excel. Yeah, it was, uh, I will show you in some later tutorials how you can ch change data between uh, MadCat and Excel, for instance, where is it? Here, input, output, yeah, and you have some possibilities to exchange data, yeah, with Excel. And uh, and as far as I know, it is easier to exchange uh, vector data between Excel and MadCat, and not so easy to exchange function data, yeah. That's why I mentioned this here, yeah, in this introduction video, yeah, that. That you don't mix this up, uh, vectors and functions. Yeah, you have to decide what you need. Yeah, what you want to do with this. Uh, 
And uh, if you want, as I have shown you here, you can easily turn function values into vector values. Yeah, mathematically, there are just some formula you have to design, and then you can uh, also have dynamic uh, dynamic uh, created uh, vector values uh, the same way uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in relation to the, your function values. Let's delete this here. And the last step, we would like to visualize all the, uh, uh, the uh, values we have evaluated so far in the fifth step here. For this, I would like to copy this, um, this, um, this plot yeah, and just add all the values which are still missing. Yeah, let's start with the, um, the uh, min values, yeah, the zeros here. Yeah, they can, we can also show in this uh, plot. Uh, to do so, we have to add um, a trace, yeah, before this one. So let's, uh, no, in front of this one here, or previous to this one, to this trace, go to uh, plots. Here is our um, add trace. Yeah, we have to, to click with the cursor here, so it will be previous to this one. And now let's uh, give it a name. We would like to show or to visualize vectors here because our um, my min is a vector. Yeah, here it is. Here, you see, it's a vector. Let's copy this here when we are here. And the unit is the same like here. Now it's turning red yeah, because this range variable works with functions but not with vectors. Yeah, that's why I told you, yeah, don't mix this up. Yeah, so we need to, to visualize this. We, we need a, a vector with matches to this vector. Yeah, and this is actually this vector here. So. And here again, let's add a trace. Yeah, we click with our cursor here, yeah, in front of this one, and then add the trace. Let's insert this, and here we need decrease. So now it works. You don't see anything because it's actually a yellow line. Let's change its color to blue, then maybe it's easier for you to see. Let's go back to plots, and here's the trace color. Let's here, you see this line. Let's make it Sicker. Here you are. But we don't want to have a line here because actually Matcat, what, what, what does Matcat do? Uh, these are our two vectors. Yeah, this is the x-axis. Yeah, it is zero and here and those, it, it will insert this point, zero, zero, and this point, pi, zero. Yeah, this point and this point and chat, it, it, it chat connects them with a line. Yeah, but in our case, it doesn't look, uh, senseless yeah so let's change its appearance go to the plot tab here and the trace color is okay but the tracing is also okay but we have to use a symbol let's talk, take those dots here now we see the the points and turn off the line so now we see here our zeros then we can also visualize if we want to such a vector in a plot yeah it's also possible yeah, to put the vector here between those two because it's still a vector. So here, click behind this and then add a new trace. The vector is called Vm. The unit, it's again Newton, ti uh, Newton times centimeter. It's turning red because th this vector does not correspond with this vector because it has a different size. Yeah, and that's why they don't, they, they have to match. Yeah, here you see that. Those vectors have the same size, and those are our points. Zero, this is x, zero, uh, y is zero, x is 10. This is the y value, the connecting y value, 20, and this is the connecting y value, and so on. Yeah, so they have to be at the, of the same size. Yeah, otherwise it will not work. So let's add a trace here as well. And here is the vector for our x axis with phi here, and we need it in decrease. And here we are. You, we, now we see this um, this line is more or less the same one, yeah. But it's, it's a vector, so let's change the uh, um, the appearance. We would like to see only the symbol, maybe this one here, and turn off the line. So and but maybe a little bit thicker. So and man, 
even more, maybe like this, and then change the color, maybe also to this blue. Then it looks like this. Yeah, this is red now uh, because um, I just copied this uh, diagram here, and now I changed it. Sometimes, yeah, if you change, if you copy, paste, and change or adjust this. This can happen, yeah, that you get an error message. Uh, what you can do is, it still works, yeah, it's not a problem, but it, you get this error message. What you can do, you can uh, close your worksheet and open it, and maybe if it's completely recalculated, this might disappear. If it will not uh, disappear, then uh, I'm afraid you have to do the, comp the, the whole plot again uh, from the scratch here, and then you don't have this this mistake uh, or this error message. Yeah, sometimes if you use this copy and paste method, then this is the risk that maybe, uh, despite the fact that everything is fine, yeah, there's actually no error, but Madcat st still still shows up the error. Yeah, um, this is annoying. Actually, I don't know what what you can do uh, despite the fact close it and and, uh, and and open it again and maybe it's it's gone uh, let's ignore this yeah and uh, continue but uh, by the way yeah but it can be also a real error yeah um, so uh, be careful yeah uh, sometimes uh, the, the students thinks yeah okay there is no error uh, it, of course you, if you copy and paste and if you don't change everything fine then of course it can be also a real error but in our case it, it shouldn't be a real error because it, it's working, yeah, you see all the points, uh, but it's uh, but Madcat uh, does not accept all the changes and for some reason. Okay, let's, maybe we can also uh, visualize here the um, the uh, zero or the maximum value and the zero of this function or the, the position of the maximum uh, value. So let's do this as well. For this, we can use if you go to plot uh, and select this. Uh, by the way, you have to select this to, to to change this diagram. You have to select this and then go to plot. Yeah. If you don't select this uh, this diagram, then actually you can only create a new plot. Yeah. And uh, this will please take in consideration. So take in consideration. So select this uh, this plot uh, uh, area and now we can add a vertical marker here and. Um, I have to look for the name for the parameter, the name for the was this one here. And let's insert this here. And if you use those vertical or horizontal marker, you have to divide with the unit to set up the unit. Yeah. In our case, it is degree. So here we are. And now it's we have it here in the right position. We can adjust the appearance of this marker, go back to plots, and now the thickness should be really thin, and the line type, maybe this uh, dotted line here, and here we are. We, we can do the same with the, uh, um, here with the, with the y-axis, this was the x-axis, the, the vertical marker, and with the y-axis we can use horizontal markers, select the block, add a horizontal marker, here we can enter the name, the name was, I have already forgotten, here mymax, okay. That is the name for this. And here, let's insert this, delete this alt value, insert it, divide it with the unit you would like to use. This is, don't forget this, it's quite, quite important. And now it moves up here, and now we can also change its experience. Click here at this placeholder for the value, and then we can make it really thin and use some dotted line. So. If we want at the end, we can turn off the uh, grid. Yeah, before we print it, let's go to document and turn off the grid. And now it looks like this. Yeah, and we have so far now we have uh, visualized in this plot everything we have evaluated until now. And um, yeah, okay. So far about this tutorial, it is already one and a half hour long. You see that despite the fact that I used the template. Uh, because of all the explanations I have to, I had to do in this tutorial, it's getting quite long. Um, thank you for your attention and maybe see you in another tutorial.